Greetings from the Gaming Pantry. Hello everybody, it's the Retro Bear here again, live as recorded, and uh, we're going to be doing a collection video today. Thankfully not a wrestling VHS collection. Uh, at the moment anyway. That may come back, I don't know, but it's about time we got back to basics uh, here in the Gaming Pantry and did some gaming related stuff, because as recording with lockdown restrictions being eased i'm not going to get too much into that uh we may start to see uh, a shift back possibly to where we were a few months ago so what better way to celebrate that by getting one of these collection videos out so i haven't done one during lockdown and perhaps i probably should have done one um or yeah literally possibly i don't know anyway uh, if you are here for the first time thank you very much indeed for tuning in um if you do like what you see don't forget to uh leave a comment uh leave a like uh, tick the notification bell for more videos and if you are uh, inclined to and it would be much appreciated please feel free to subscribe uh, it would very very uh, make me very very happy as uh, yes it's it's uh, it's always nice to see new subscribers new people being uh, brought, drawn in by the content so yes uh, when I was doing these collection videos I sort of left the bigger collections till the very very end and this is where we're at now. Uh, so I've still got PlayStation 2 to do. I've still got uh, Xbox. I've still got that to do. Uh, and there's the handhelds and there's the Wii U. But this is probably the biggest one aside from the Commodore 64. I'm just looking around to see I'm going to get caught out by this. Uh, yeah, it's probably about the third, uh, third biggest one I've done. I've done Xbox 360, which is the biggest one I've done to date. And I've done the PlayStation 3. So this probably falls just behind the PlayStation 3 at the moment. And you'll know what it is anyway. Because you've seen the title card. It's our old friend. The PlayStation 1. And um, this one is a bit temperamental. I must be honest with you. Those who saw my wrestling video uh, collection. I uh, would have noticed that uh, it seemed to have a problem with a couple of games. I've noticed that with a few games. So I think I might get Mrs. Bear to have a look at this. Uh, see if she can see where there's possibly a laser problem i don't know but yeah i mean this is uh, the classic the, the classic it, well, it was the classic one if they brought the classic version out but but this is the definitive playstation one for me forget the little uh, mini one they brought out that looked like a paracetamol tablet no this is the one this is the one that you should have and a few years ago you could have bought these quite people were giving these away they were giving them away at car boot sales uh, every table had one and i sold one of these last year to a um, last year or the year before Last thing was to a guy at work. Um, I sold him one of these, a controller and a copy of Colin McRae's Rally for 25 quid, which he thought was a fair price. So they've gone from being pretty much um, worthless to actually you know, uh, commanding quite a few quid. And as I said during the last sort of 12 months, the more PlayStation 1 games I've seen actually out in sort of charity shops, you know, places I go to, charity shops and things like that, has been just ridiculous. So much so that I've actually managed to increase my collection quite considerably over the, the last 12, 18 months. So this is it. Uh, memory card in there. Very, very useful to have one of those. You're going to need them when I save games. Two controller ports at the front. And there's your reset button. It's always handy on a console to have a reset button. I never use it. I just tend to press the on-off button and start again. And there's, of course, the eject button, which then brings you into the CD tray. Uh, and this also played uh, music CDs. Which is quite quite something at the time because this was up against what I'll address in a minute the N64 in the background which couldn't do that it was cartridge based um, so this was something different you could play music CDs in this uh, I think that was bad I don't think you could you couldn't you might have played VCDs remember VCDs but you couldn't do DVD in it DVD wasn't out then that would probably explain why uh, this by the way is V Rally 99 on the on the N64 uh, unboxed edition, so I've just got the cartridge only. Uh, that'll be bombing away in the background. Um, there may be a V Rally in the second part of this. This video will be two parts as well, just so you do that. Back to PlayStation 1 anyway. So on the back there, you've got the parallel, I love these parallel uh, ports at the back here, which I'm probably going to break if I open it. Yeah, the parallel port there at the back there is a digital, is that digital serial port. Tell, tell how good at these things I am. And there's your multi out audio visual, and there's your power cable. And on the bottom there, lots of ventilation. Uh, you can see I'm missing two pads off this one, but I'm not really bothered about that. 
Uh, this, so this is the SCPH-5552, which I think is the most common model. And your serial number for those that are interested is B2818991. There you go. So lots of... Things. But I love... I mean, I loved how... Again, the side of the machine there, you can say... I loved how this used to... This looks... This is one of those great consoles, I think. It's just an absolute... You, you just associate this with gaming straight away. The branding on it. You know, you look at other, con you know, you got Nintendo, all got their branding on it, and and that that just there just sticks out. It's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And everybody recognises. You show people one of these, I know exactly what it is, and that's that's how it has to be. You don't have to look at something. And go, yeah, I know exactly what that is. It's a it's a PlayStation One. Two controls up front. When it first came out, it was an um this. No, it wasn't. I haven't got one. I haven't got one to hand. Uh, have I not? Oh yeah. So yes, I have. I have got one to hand. There's a crash in the background, you know what's happened, hang on. Oh, right, there we go. So this was the, the control that came out, which in my opinion was quite, poss quite possibly one of the top three controllers of all time. Uh, you've got the uh, D-pad on that side, here's your four buttons there as well, which got symbols on them, rather than A, B, you know, X, Y, whatever. Uh, start and select button in the middle, and you got there two shoulder pads as well. So these these were really good in the 80s, but they made a comeback in the 90s. And you got trigger buttons there and triggers there. So that was great. Now then that was um, superseded. And when I first played on one of these, this was just absolutely unbelievable. I couldn't quite believe just how much different this made gaming feel but they introduced two analog sticks now you look at that today and people go well yeah standard but it wasn't back then back in uh, mid to late 90s it was not a standard thing to have two analog sticks there a button there to press so you could have the analog control not all the games supported this you would still have to use the d-pad but you play with that on, on there and it's very difficult to to go back to playing something like that um, some games I found like Crash. I played it recently, Crash Bandicoot. I find it much better to use the analog for some and the D-pad for the other parts of the game. But yeah, I mean that is just a great, great um, controller, and that sort of sets up to where we are today in in, in how things, have, how game controllers have come on. The GameCube, I think, uh, the N64, uh, which came out after, which I've actually got one here. I'm playing it has got an analog stick right in the middle so this was them trying to play catch up and then of course the gamecube one had the um, con uh, analog controller uh, stick as well and it was just standard after that absolutely standard now i first got my playstation one back in the tail end of 97 just after i started going to st uh, just after i started working and i bought this in a stereo unit at the same time I got this, I think, with Alien Trilogy and possibly another game that I can't think of at the moment. Um, for what did I pay? About 180 quid, I think it was. Uh, one of these, two two games, 180 quid, something like that, from Comet, who don't exist anymore now. For those of the, those people overseas, who are not sure what Comet is, was an electrical superstore. They no longer trade, um, and that was it. And a friend of mine had got one probably before me. I uh, can't remember when, because I think he started working before I did, and he sort of got um, Adidas Power Football and uh, Akatua Soccer. He, he loved his football games, and they were all right, but I still... Adidas Power Soccer was, was not a football game for me, and Akatua Soccer was all right, but I think it was just a bit... You play it now, and it's horribly clunky and not very good. I didn't, wasn't overly impressed by it. Nothing really sort of stuck out until I played International Superstar Soccer, and then I was like, ooh, this is, this is different. This is much, much different. I think FIFA 98, uh, the road, the, uh, the FIFA 98 World Cup game was also very popular around the time we were playing games anyway. And I actually took this, um, I had crashed Nitro Kart for Christmas the one year, the year it came out. And I took this round to a friend's house with a copy of that because he was obviously convinced that Mario Kart was the best game that I'd ever played. So during the course of that Christmas day and night, not only did I manage to um, return the favour of many, many years of being beaten on various versions of Mario Kart, and uh, smash him into oblivion, but also managed to eat most of his food uh, and uh, take 25 quid off him playing poker. It was a fantastic day. I don't think I've had a day as good as that ever since. I've never played poker since, and I know that for sure. But yeah, and that was it. Now, my original PlayStation 1 was stolen. 
in a burglary and all my games went as well i can hardly remember any of the games that i had other than sort of time crisis because i had the the um the namco 45 g con uh the uh, point blank was another game there uh chase the express which is the game i'm, I'm desperately trying to get hold of again i i don't see it i've not seen it anywhere uh but i know it's not going to be all that brilliant but i love that game ah, chase the express uh, look it up it's a really good game uh i had resident evil uh apocalypse the bruce willis game which you'll see shortly uh metal do you have metal gear so I, don't, I, I, I can't remember I, i've i luckily we've kept some photographs of, of we, we took some photographs ironically uh when, when we were broken into it was i think it was boxing day or the 27th of december we, we went away for a night to, to see mrs bear's parents and we'd come back we'd been broken into and stuff had been stolen but luckily we'd taken some photographs on christmas day of the dog our, our old dog mervyn playing with his playing with his toys at christmas and all our stuff that got stolen was in the background so my playstation one there and my xbox which also went to be dvd player uh and Mysterio, they were all they were all in the background. The shots of when the assessor came around, he said, "Well, have you got any recent photographs there?" Oh, two days ago. Oh yeah. Uh, but I can see in the photograph there's a box of my PlayStation games, but they're all sort of um, on end. You can't see what they are, so I can't really remember what I had then. There's about fifty or so games with it just sort of disappeared. Everyone knows the story. I've told it before now about PlayStation One, where I traded in my box Mega Drive One and all their box games, the manuals for fifty quid, and bought. Uh, a couple of PlayStation One games, SmackDown and <coughs> Spice World. So, yeah, but I, I love the console. It was great. And, of course, when they replaced it, they swapped that version out with the Aspirin, or the Paracetamol, and that was it. And, and to be honest with you, I can't remember what happened to that PlayStation One. I can't remember what happened to it at all. I don't remember when we gave it away, uh, whether I trade. I wouldn't have traded it in, possibly. Would I trade it in, possibly? I may have done. Uh, but yeah it was just and because I couldn't remember the games they just gave me one of those back uh, it was mostly disappointing to lose that collection but hey you start again and this is where we are now now all this stuff here is likely probably to have come from pickups from car boots from charity shops stuff people have sent me um, and, and things like that now I've got about 130 odd games and like I said this is going to be a two part video uh, I should have started my clock to find out how long this was going to be. So I'm going to work out and try and whiz through these as quickly as possible. And uh, we'll see how we get on. Anything that springs to mind, and I'll be able to fill you in on, I will do so. But as always, being more of a collector than a gamer nowadays, a lot of this stuff possibly I won't have been able to sit down and play. Because I like collecting. I'm a hoarder. people shout at me down the street when i walk around so let's start at the beginning shall we? that's always the best place to start uh, incidentally before i do this um if you'd like to uh, leave a comment about this why not tell me your playstation one journey when you first came across it um always good we can share those comments around and see what people we people think about it i mean if you're you know it's back then 20 years ago 25 23 years ago i was a gamer now I'm more of a a collector um than playing games but anyway so first game up quite applicable for those regular viewers this channel uh, is action bass and i think this i don't know i think this may have come out of a charity shop i'm going to try and possibly open these up best i can um now if i just show you that you'll get an idea that some of these cases are terrible they really are uh, the, the broken case on this one that's the back of it anyway uh, but those people who watch this channel regularly will know they have an affinity a fish a liking for fishing games for some reason because everybody seems to think that fishing games are utterly rubbish they're not utterly rubbish um they're just misunderstood uh next up is actua soccer 3 with good old mr charisma on the front there alan shearer uh, now i can open this one up and show you the inside there we go so manual and disc in good condition Again, very hard to find these cases unbroken. And there's the back of it. I, I was never a fan of, of this particular series. Uh, who have they got in commentary here? Barry Davis and Martin O'Neill. Um, I was never a fan of that vector graphics look. It just didn't seem right. And um, it was an interest, interesting article uh, on the BBC website a few months, a few weeks ago, but with Barry Davis talking about how he had to record that. Uh, if you haven't seen it, then um, yeah, it was about there. They sort of did a 
it's like 50 of the best sports video games ever and uh, this is my original version um uh, it's actually not because it's, it's Alien Resurrection. I think I haven't got. I actually haven't got Alien Trilogy. Alien Trilogy, one of the first games I had. I haven't actually got it back. I've got Alien Resurrection though, which is a game that uh, I just don't get on with. But again, nice on the inside. This one came off a car boot because I was. I think I came across this game. And I thought, oh, Alien Trilogy, and I thought, no, this is a completely different game. I just remember playing Alien Trilogy for the first time and thinking, wow, that game is just something else. Really is, uh, really is great. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, All Star Tennis '99 with uh, Michael Chang. Remember him? American tennis player. I'm trying to think who that is over there as well. Possibly Steffi Graf, but I, I can't quite tell. Wimbledon champion 1998. Look it up on the internet, and then it will tell you who it is. Uh, so in this game, you've got uh, such great players. Probably isn't here, actually. Uh, Michael Chang, Gustavo Curtin, Amanda Kurtz, uh, Richard Krejcik, Jana Novotna, Mark Filipusis, uh, Conchita Martinez, and Jonas Bjork Bjorkman. It helps if you watch sport that you get used to how people pronounce names like that. Because when people tell me about... Because uh, part of my job, I have to ring people up at work and... and Sometimes you know, we are dealing with with people of all sorts of uh, or, you know ethnic origins and race and, and nationality. Uh, so sometimes I have a go at trying to pronounce the really difficult names, and I, I sometimes make a complete pig's ear pig's ear of it. And sometimes I get a lot of compliments by saying, "Oh, well done," you know. Uh, Alone in the dark, the new nightmare. I think this came out of a car boot. Uh, ooh. it comes on two discs as well give you an idea how often I come into these games two discs there we go uh, so the, the manual is there this is really good condition this one actually really good condition uh, not the manual. and also uh, in there was a couple of advertisements one for the game I've just bought and uh, Sheepdog and Wolf which is the game I had uh, on the Playstation 1 which got stolen uh, but I did manage to pick up um, the PC version of it. Yeah, the dark, new nightmare. Great cases with these PlayStation. I know they break easily, um, but you know you talk about great, you know Mega Drive ones, Master System ones, probably the best uh, that you can come across. The current DVD ones are great, but these probably were sort of sitting behind there. They just, they just look great when you sort of stack them up. They, they look really, really good. Uh, we mentioned it earlier. There's Apocalypse with Bruce Willis. A nice crack on the case there. Uh, it's one of my favourite games. I, I don't know why. I think I, I, whether it's got, it's got Bruce Willis in it, I don't know. Um, but I had this for Christmas when it came out. And played it an awful lot. I don't think I ever finished it. I don't think I ever got around to finished it. But I got quite far into it. Uh, and I think if memory serves me correctly, Bruce Willis agreed to give his likeness and voice the game and then he sort of fell out with the developers. Uh, so it's not quite the way it is. The end of the world is near. You're Bruce, starring as Trey Kincaid. Great name. Uh, nanophysicist. <laughs> Believable stuff here. And sole defender of the world. It's up to you to defeat the four horsemen. Um, not sure which inc incarnation that is uh, before it's happy trails to us all. yippee ki -yay. It doesn't say that bit. I just had that bit on the end, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure which. Yeah, Horseman. I don't know. Um, well, but yeah, uh, cool. This is a. This looks like it's one of those games I've picked up a car boot. And again, I really hate about these PlayStation One cases is these stupid inlay cards. Uh, this is Army Men, 3D. And of course, these games are meant to be absolutely terrible. Uh, I wouldn't say I've played this one because I don't know. Uh, there we go, I'm in 3D. So again, manual and disc. I need to look at the uh, the inside slip ca uh, the inlay cards coming away from the little grippers. I don't like that at all. Someone paid 9.99 for that, it wasn't me. I mean, he had trouble seeing that, but uh, gives no idea what it's about. I mean, those games aren't going to be very good. But I think that was just a money's card. But now, I stumbled across this in a charity shop for 30 pence. And because, again, I'd never heard of it, I thought, well, I'd better grab hold of this because um, I don't know of it. It might be quite good. And when I got home and did a bit more reading about it, I actually found out it was a bit of a, a, bit of a hidden gem. This is Attack of the Sorcerman from Psygnosis, who were one of the biggest supporters of the PlayStation 
in terms of game development when it first started. That's not good because I just a nice cracking sound when I just touched it. Those cases are brittle. Uh, there we go, it's Attack of the Sourceman. It's a big old sticker on the front of that, which is never going to come off, no matter how hard I try. I've had a watch of this online. It's It, it looks like it's pretty good fun. So, uh, Psygnosis games do tend to be quite good, so I'll uh, I have enjoy playing that one. Uh, next up is uh, Film Licence, Batman and Robin. Two for the price of one. Again, this is going to be a, a car boot pickup. Uh, Batman and Robin. There's the back of the box. Don't know much about that one. I've paid, played it briefly. I think when I picked it up, I played it very, very quickly and then put it away again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Big strike bowling. Because I love rubbish games. That looks just terrible, doesn't it? Uh, from all people, Gotham Games, whoever they may be. I've absolutely no idea. There's the box money. But again, this came from, I think, pick up last year, charity shop stuff. They usually pay any more than the pound, so I probably wouldn't have paid any more than the pound for it. Bowling game. Now, there were two games in this series. This is Bugs Bunny and Taz in Time Busters. Again, you have to bear with you. No manual with that one, sadly. Just the uh, and a slightly cracked box. Yeah, that's definitely gone at the top there. Uh, but these were good games. I didn't play this one initially. Um, but you can see there, there's uh, it's a sort of isometric, isometric 3D uh, game adventure. This one I did have originally, and this is Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. So I had that one um, my first time around. And I was happy to get it again because it was quite quite a good game, and I mean, I'm a big fan of Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies and all that anyway. So to pick a copy up again, a copy, a copy up again, a copy up again a few years later, uh, absolutely thrilled to get that one. Uh, this is just a bit of filler tap. Again, I think uh, I think I got this recently from my man on the market stall for a quid. Caesar's Palace. Uh, we all know what that game is going to be like. Slightly broken case at the top, so I'll just show you the disc and the manual like that. And that we're in the risk of dropping everything on the floor and making things worse. I know screenshots on the back because it's those sorts of games. You know what those games are like, don't you? And work out the best system of putting these here so I can keep moving things around and not disturb anything. Uh, up next is Carmageddon. Again, I think this is a charity shop pickup pre lockdown. Carmageddon series, when it first came out, of course, was very, very controversial. We were sort of running people over and killing them for fun. Um, it's actually got the French. Uh, Classification. Classification there. In the T U Moin D I eighteen all. Yeah. I shall never attempt French once again on this channel. Um Castrol Honda Superbike Racing. Only the best titles on here from THQ. Uh no idea where this came from. Manual's got a bit crease, huh? Manual the manual got that. Manual's a bit Wonky. There's the There we go. And there's the back of it. Do like a good biking game, so hopefully. Uh, again, I don't remember playing that one. It's not to say that I haven't played it, but I don't remember it. This one I have played, I think. No, I haven't played this, but I played another one. Uh, this is Championship Motocross with Ricky Carmichael. Yeah, Ricky Carmichael. <laughs> uh, now, there we go. It's a bit of a tatty one, this one. A bit mucky on the inside, but not to worry. Championship motocross. Again, this was probably, uh, I'm guessing it's going to be a, a 
cheap pick up for a quid most of these games usually were don't play much more more from that now one of the great racing game series of all time colin mccray's rally uh, if you haven't got a copy of this game in your collection why on earth have you not uh, it's readily available uh, to coin a phrase it's dirt cheap which is a sort of series it's it's, it's sort of now, it's now obviously with colin mccray no longer being with us it's sort of morphed into um the dirt series and it's also a, a codemasters game manual which will tell me about all the exciting games that are coming out, like MTV Music Generator 2, uh, World Championship Snooker 2001, Toka World Touring Cars, that's a good one, um, LMA, Man LMA Manager 2002, not so good. It's actually, it's actually called Football Manager Compati Companiato 2002, uh, Colin McRae 2 and Prince Nassim Boxing, uh, Mike Tyson boxing as well. I've got that on the uh, Xbox. Uh, World Championship Snooker and Micro Maniac, which was the lots of Micro Machines. Music 2000, No Fear, Downhill, Bikey, Mountain Biking. These are on the bestseller range. Uh, Colin McRae's Rally 3, Micro Machines version 3. Uh, Toka 2 and Toka Touring Cars. And uh, yeah, there's a thing at the back there. So yeah. But seriously, if you are doing PlayStation 1 collection, you are going to get your PlayStation 1 games. You need the Colin McRae series in it. Uh, so much so, there's a second one as well. Colin McRae 2. Again, if you... Seriously great game. Honestly, I, I said this the other day to uh, some people on uh, chat. This Colin McRae game holds up really well to this day. Whereas the game behind me, I played that, and, and I've got to be honest with you folks, I didn't get on with it. I found it a bit sort of strange. Now, yes, bad, bad news, I'm coming back. Um, up next, this is where I've gone off, Command and Conquer. It's a platinum one. You're watching Rob, there we go. Is that the first platinum we've done today? Possibly. I haven't got many platinum. I've oh, probably got a few. Um, what have we got here? Someone's written a lovely P on these. I'm not sure it's P for platinum, I don't know. There's the manual that goes with it. And also, someone's very, very kindly. Um, there's a load of passwords in there as well. Super. It's always great to find things like that. Now, of course, a game like that, being the strategy game, is incredibly worthwhile playing if you have one of these. It's a PlayStation mouse. This a PlayStation bought a mouse out. Look at that. There we go. PlayStation branded mouse. So that can yeah, plug into your PlayStation. There it is. Yeah. Never seen one before. I bought this years and years ago at a car boot sale. I've never seen one before, and I don't think I've seen one since. Not sure if they're particularly collectible or rare, I don't know, but uh, other peripherals I've got for the PlayStation 1, which I can't show you here. I've got the four-player multi-tap, which is strange because I don't I don't have four friends. Uh, I've also got the uh, G-Con 45. I had it originally with the Time Crisis game. That obviously got stolen. Uh, so I've now got, I think, two G-Con 45s. I don't think I've got any more peripherals for it. No, I haven't. That's the only, only ones I've got. So you're not missing a lot if I don't show you the G-Con. Uh, next up, uh, Cool Borders 3, which is a very, very uh, easy game to pick up. Great thing about these when you do pick them up is you find that some people still leave in the, um, the promotional, di the promotional uh, game discs. So that shows off the winter releases for 1998. There's the manual as well. So that's, uh, of course, says dual shot compatible. So you know when you buy games that you can use the uh, analog controller with it. Yeah, cool borders. So not a difficult game to pick up. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, very kindly donated to me by uh, the most generous man on the planet, Sean, at Retro Games Revived. Do you want a copy of Crash Bandicoot, Ross? I, I don't, I've got three. Yeah, if you don't want it, Sean, I'll have it. Yeah. I think that's what he said to me, anyway. I think it's one of his, one of his, one of his days when he was sort of giving away stuff at stupid, uh, stupid o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning, anybody want these like, you know, box Mega Drive games, what? 
everyone's in bed at five o'clock in the morning, apart from certain people who are wide awake, and everybody wakes up and finds out Sean's been giving stuff away at five o'clock in the morning again. I think he was giving away Resident Evil 2, you know, I, I, I think he asked me about that, I said, no, it's all right, I don't want it. I'll have this one instead, no, he, he didn't send me this one. Um, it's Dancing Stage Euromix, yes. A charity shop near me has had this game in their store for about 18 months, 16, 18 months now. Uh, and it's a platinum version as well, it's not this one. I don't have a dance map for the PlayStation one there. So I would have to play this using my control pad. Uh, featuring, everyone loves this bit where Retro Bear sits here and reads out the tracks that are on this game from the back of the box. So for all those people waiting for that, take a drink. Here we go. Uh, boasting Poptastic, mate. Uh, Favourites from Cameo, Word Up, Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, Shaft's Mucho Mambo, and Boyzone's Classic, So Good. Uh, there's 24 tracks in this game. Now, is this a Konami game? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm dare say some of these game, uh, these tracks on here are going to be their own tunes as well. Uh, it doesn't actually give you a list of credits, which is rather which is a bit of a shame. So you spared that one. I'm not going to read um, read any more songs out to you than that. But uh, yeah, dancing stage Euromix. Remember these in the arcade? Great hulking things. Um, they were trying to give this one away. Dancing stage party edition. This is the platinum version. Bet you haven't got this one, Rob. I bet he has. <laughs> so, ooh, there we go. That was a little bit of a crack case on it. But, uh, nothing too bad. Uh, ooh, yeah, so what have we got in this one? Uh, Kylie's Can't Get You Out of My Head, S Club 7, Don't Stop Moving, and The Cardigans, My Favourite Game. Uh, 51 different tracks on this one so 24 on that one this is more double the fun if you like that sort of thing uh, oh music credits there we go credits music credits can't get you out of my gosh it's really bad sorry. can't get you out of my head uh, the bad touch performed by the bloodhound gang I don't know that one my favourite game and then Oh god. Who on earth pretty? Uh there's a game uh performed by Rufus and Chaka Khan. Uh You Feel for Me or something like that, I'm sure it is. You can't I can, can you read that there? It's actually got it in it's the same coloured writing as the background. Yeah, so there's five known tracks on there and forty six ones which are either um unlicensed or songs you've never heard of before. That's the fun of those games. I can't remember if I paid one pound. It said one pound fifty on the front. I can't remember if I paid one pound fifty for that or not. Possibly. Uh, another one, Dance UK. I've got this on the PlayStation Two. Um, I think this is actually a fairly decent lineup. Here we go, Dance UK. Uh, so we got Sophie Ellis Baxter's Murder on the Dance Floor, Fives Let's Dance, DJ Jose Guadalupe with Hey Baby. Oh, it's not that annoying one, is it? It goes, Hey Baby. Boo. Ah. Um, Gina G, who are just a little bit. M, Pop Music. And Big Fun's Blame It on the Boogie. No. That's terrible. I'll take back one. I thought this was a good... Good soundtrack. No, it's terrible. Um, what have we got on here then? We've got uh, Pop Music M, Blame It on the Boogie, Big Fun, Middle Dance Floor, Last Dance Five, Move Your Feet, Junior, Senior, Round Round, Sugar Babes, Cotton Eye Joe by the Rednecks. Why is that not written on the back of the box? Instant Purchase. When You're Looking Like That, Westlife. Reach, S Club 7. Everyone loves that song. Um, as a... Oh, something I can't pronounce by Last Ketchup, but it's not the one you're thinking of. Um, and then a load of stuff that um, is by people you've never heard of before, like Nappy Hardcore by Highgate. That's his song called Nappy Hardcore. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Um, yeah, next up, uh, the complete Davis Cup tennis, which I think I got from the Birmingham Game Market last year. Yes, I did. Pound. Terrible. 
Rubbish game. Absolutely awful. Coming in gaming market in 2018, 2019 of course, none likely to be one in 2020. Should have been July, but uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I haven't checked, but I that is going ahead. Uh, this came out of the charity shop for 30p. This is uh, Ian Livington's Death Trap Dungeon. Of course, for those of us of a certain age, uh, remember that uh, Ian Livingston was behind a lot of those uh, choose, not, yeah, choose Your Own Adventure books. The fantasy... Oh, what are they called now? Yeah, I don't know. They were very popular when we were younger anyway. I'm pretty sure this came with a book as well. Well, there might be a book about it, I don't know. But that was in the charity shop for... So while that, let me just rotate the game, hang on a second. Doing well, nothing's fallen over yet. Destruction Derby 2. I, I was... Or Derby. Now, the reason I say Derby is because that's how they use it in America. That's that's the phrase, used, Destruction Derby. The Brown Derby, the famous restaurant in Hollywood. That was around the 40s. That's why I say Derby rather than Derby. Because Derby's a place in England. Uh, so Destruction Derby 2. Platinum Edition. I played this a few weeks ago. I did mention it on our podcast plug. Um... And I wasn't happy with it. I, did, I didn't like it at all. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with the first one. I don't, you know, a lot of people love the, these two games. I was never particularly taken by it. My, my mate who had the PlayStation 1, he, had bought, he bought the first game. And he was like, oh, she's great. And I was like, oh, you're just, no, you're just smashing cars up. Not particularly happy with it. Die Hard Trilogy. Again, if you have a PlayStation 1 you haven't got this game, you need shooting. Um, this is great. Three games in here, they all work in slightly different ways. The first game is sort of a... It's not quite a first-person shooter, but it's sort of behind uh, John McClane or raised above him, and he was sort of running around the... whatever tower it's called. I can't remember. Um, I'm not the memory man. And it, that's, it, I don't know, it doesn't quite work for me. The second one is by far and away the best version of the game. I've always played it with a joypad, so it's going to amuse me well with it. I presume a mouse might work with it. That might be an idea for a video. Uh, much, much better. First-person shooter, um, on-the-rail shooter. Great stuff. Uh, really is the best part of the game. And the third one, which is just like the, the third film itself, terrible. Driving game, sort of... It's, it's sort of a bit like Crazy Taxi, but you've got to keep driving around to locations and... A time attack and defeat. Oh, I just couldn't get on with it at all. I really didn't like it, and it's the graphics are ropey as anything. Wasn't particularly happy with that third part at all, but you know, reasonably decent game. Um, I'm doing Monsters Inc. Uh, Scare Island next because it's called Disney's Pixar Monsters Inc. So therefore, it goes in after Die Hard in terms of alphabetical order. Because on the spine it says Disney Pixar, and there's a conversation to be had many many times over uh, this I think came out of a car no a charity shop last year very big fan of the Monsters Inc first film anyway so I don't mind picking you know my collection I don't mind picking up the rubbish uh, here's another one Disney's Donald Duck in Quack Attack again this would have come out of a car boot many many years ago never heard of this game uh, I think have I got this on PlayStation 2 there is this, this is on PlayStation 2. I don't think I have. Uh, but I've got Lucky Dime Caper on the Sega Master System. Donald Duck's Quack Attack. Uh, this was, again, 30p charity shop job uh, in the last sort of couple of years. This is Dracula the Resurrection. This is a two-disc game. I did try and have this running in the background a few weeks, a few videos ago. Um... And it had a wonderfully, fantastically, cinematically produced introduction. And then it just sort of stopped and went straight in the game, so I couldn't leave it as it was, which is a bit of a shame. I don't know if it's any good or not. It's by uh, Canal Plus and Microids, so I don't really know if it is. Um, there's no classification on it as well. Oh, there's something back 15, sorry. 50. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think I got that at the same time I got uh, Death Trap Dungeon. Uh, this is a real piece of rubbish. This is Drag Stars. Why is it a piece of rubbish? It's because it's by Midas. 
Yes, everyone loves Midas games. Uh, this is not only is it a terrible game, it's got a cracked spindle with bits falling off it. And it does have oh yeah, the manual's there. That is the manual. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot to it. I've watched a video. Have I watched a video of this game? Is it another game of theirs I've got? I can't remember. Um. Yes, I watched a video of it. It it is it is exactly what it is. It's a drag race, and it's not very good at all. But I like bad games, so I don't mind that. Uh, driver two. Again, love the driver games. This is the uh, English version. I have the Australian version for some reason as well. There it is. There's the manual. Again, another very well-known series of games. I've got driver games across my collection. I've got parallel lines for the Wii. Uh, got one which I can't see up there at the moment as well. It's just come around the corner. Yeah, so there's, there's loads of these sort of things. A uh, really bad game here. Uh, hardcore ECW Hardcore Revolution. He's of course uh, under E for ECW. Now this is when uh, Acclaim lost the rights to the WWF games at the time they made uh, Warzone and Raw, Raw, Raw is War, and then. Uh, they lost the license, so Acclaim took those engines and produced, I think it was two ECW games, and they were not very good at all. I think it was, was, it, was there a WCW Backstage Assault, I'm pretty sure there's another game which was not great. So they used that reskinned it, the same moves, and it just wasn't great. Again, I, I found this in a charity shop with 30 odd pence, I'm not sure if it's any good or not, I've never even heard about it, and it's E.T., the 20th anniversary uh, game. Don't think again. This is something that's particularly rare or collectible, uh, but I'd never seen it before. This is Interplanetary Mission. Right, so I think it's a, an isometric 3D type adventure with ET in it. I, again, I, I grew up around the time ET came out, and I, I just didn't get it. I didn't see ET until it came on the telly. That was probably about 20 years after it came out. No, 15 years after it came out, but mid 90s, I think it was. Um. Because it took forever to come on TV. I don't know if you remember that. I'm on, I'm on the, the, the terrestrial channels. It just wasn't a film that was premiered right away. It, it was just um, years and years in the making. But uh, what's my time doing? <laughs> Half an hour. Next up, UEFA Euro 2000. There. Uh, again, it says UEFA Euro 2000. I'm going to stop doing that because it's getting a bit annoying now. Uh, this is the EA Sports. So this is going to be coming off the FIFA. Um version eurocrats dodgy mullets and lots of lovely tulips and this was a after each game this june which would be euro 2000 so 20 years ago near enough uh, don't miss bravos now, it's an old television channel we used to have over here on cable and satellite uh, don't miss bravos essential euro 2000 fan scene will be at the games amongst the crowds and in the bars giving you the fans eye view and more better looks ambience than you could shake a frit at it's the next best thing to being there. Um, yeah, if you ever watch those, that's what it was all about. More importantly, there's the game and the manual flying out. Manual. Back of box. Saw this a few weeks ago on one of my videos. This is Evil Zone. Um, it's got a fantastically a uh, very very uh, nice anime stroke magna uh, introduction and then turns into what looks to be a disappointing Tekken Virtua Fighter type game a lot of people I'm sure will be very interested in that I'm not uh, Formula 1 Championship 2000 because the PlayStation was full of uh, excellent racing games which is the official license which EA got our hands on and this is the definitive Formula 1 season 2000 experience so you too can experience what it feels like to drive around a stack uh, a track unsafely uh, FIFA 2000 with Sol Campbell on the front good old Sol Campbell oh, there's loads of stuff in this one cripes try and get to the bottom of it so now, game manual. Also, there's a, a FIFA 2000, the album, 
featuring such great uh, artists as Robbie Williams, Underworld, Gomez, Supergrass Placebo, Bentley Rhythm Ace, Cassius, Paul Van Dyke, uh, Alice DJ and Tintin Out. There's also an EA Sports promotional manual and uh, football isn't the only fun you can have in the park. Advertisement for Theme Park World. No wonder that was so heavy. I bought it. It's all paraphernalia and promotion. The world of football. In the world of M people, we are moving slowly on. FIFA 97 with David Ginola on the front. This also has a FIFA promotional uh, and a sadly no manual with that one. And there is the back of the box. I think FIFA with 97 was around about the time I started to fall out of love with the. Uh, with FIFA games for some reason. Uh, this is the Road to the World Cup, which some people say is probably the best FIFA game. I've not played enough of it to know that. I'll be able to comment. Uh, broken box, uh, but he has uh, the manual with it. David Beckham on the front there. Of course, uh, he remembers World Cup 98 with great affinity. You don't know what happened. He got sent off against Argentina. In what can only be described as a very overzealous refereeing. Also was interesting was the guy who he kicked out at, or flicked his heel at, um, Ortega got sent off in the quarterfinal against the Dutch uh, for um, diving. Which is ironically what he did during that game in, in the second round. Anyway, we'll move on, I'm not bitter. Uh, next up is uh, Firestorm Thunderhawk 2 from Core Design. I remember Thunderhawk being a big game when it first came out. Possibly on, on the Amiga or the PC, probably the Amiga I think. Um, and it sort of I found out years later that there was a version. It must have sold really well because it's a platinum version. Uh, some people talk about platinum versions. Uh, another piece of rubbish. This is Formula Karts, not just Formula Karts, but Formula Karts Special Edition. Um, made by Telstar Games, who of course used to bring out lots of compilations of records, music. There we go, Formula Karts. Uh, other such great titles in this series, Lone Soldier, Onside, Wrecking Crew, Bubsy 3D. So that tells you all you need to know about possibly how good that game is. I have a feeling that may not be the last time we see a game from Telstar in this collection. Absolute belting classic, Formula 1 from Psygnosis. This again is another game that you need to have if you're collecting PlayStation 1. This just completely reset the form, the racing game genre in terms of Formula One, and certainly went a long way to do it. It's got proper licenses, proper on-screen licensed graphics. Uh, mine's got a great crack down the front of it, but it's also got race game com race commentary from uh, Murray Walker. Now, again, Murray Walker has got one of those definitive voices in his field of of, of sport. Just absolutely fantastic. You've got to have a copy of that game. You've got to. It just just so fantastic. It, you know, it looks ropey by today's standards, but that's because it's a 25 year old game, and most 25 year old games look a bit ropey by today's standards. But again, if you, PlayStation 101, you need a copy of that game. G Police, you could probably argue we need a copy of that as well. Again, you may have seen this game running a few weeks ago in the background. It's a double disco. Okay, it's also got the manual with it. I had this game originally, I didn't play it much, and then I bought it again years later. I'm pretty sure Mrs. Bear said she used to play that quite a lot. Again, you need these games. Gran Turismo. Big game, Al. Are you watching? This is the Platinum version, sadly. Again, I bought this when it first came out. It's a game I had originally, and I remembered it. See, it seems to me it triggers something off. And I must be honest with you, I was sold on the fact that this was meant to be the greatest racing game ever. This is going to be better than anything you've ever seen before in your entire life. And it was too serious. You know, I, I'm a guy who enjoys playing Formula One games and games like this where you can just belt round and this. Now, 
you can't do that it's a bit too serious didn't stop me buying the rest of the games in the series is Gran Turismo 2 I've also got all the ones on the PlayStation 3 and uh, PlayStation 2 and I think I've got one on the PlayStation 3 as well I'm not sure this is the game I'm meant to be sniffing uh, it's a, a snuff, uh, s scratch and sniff version or something of it might be one of the PlayStation 2 games, I don't know, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, there we go, there's the manual. Uh, there's uh, some advertisements in there for um, PlayStation memory cards. Oh, well, pit stop disc, there we go. Please rub the disc label, the GT mode, gently with your fingertips or a soft cock to experience the authentic pit stop smell. Do not scratch the disc label. Smells like my toast I had for breakfast. I think they're having a laugh with that, to be honest with you. Um, I've got two versions of this for some old oh, driving strategy guide and the manual. So it's a complete Gran Turismo 2. Possibly, a little bit diesely. Um, just gives you an idea of how good my toast was for breakfast. Yeah, I've got butter, haven't I? Uh, next up, now I had the first one of these games. I bought the first one when it came out, Gran Turismo, uh, Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Auto, and this is GTA 2. But yes, I had the first one, um, and it was my intention to get the uh, London add on disc as well, but uh, I forgot or lost interest, I can't remember. Possibly both. Um, but, oh yeah, it comes with a. Great. Comes with the map. Now you might be wondering, or sort of thinking, I bet he's never opened that before. You're right. Because I think when I first started buying games, I very rarely do what I do now, which is sort of make sure everything's inside. I've got a giant crack across the back of it, so <laughs> can't see it that light, but... Uh, I say it's a giant crack, it's yes, a surface crack, but yeah, some of these I may be opening for the first time since I bought them, I can't remember what I did with them. Uh, next up, I've put this in the background a few weeks ago, this is Gunfighter The Legend of Jesse James, and this is also light gun compatible. I picked this up in a charity shop recently, I say recently, in the last six months or so, probably for uh, a pound fifty. I think there's a version on the PlayStation 2 as well. It's not particularly, there's a pretty sticker residue there. So it's dry, paper sort of. Uh, do two more in this one, then we'll leave the rest of part two, I think, because this is going to be, uh, just checking my time out, it's going to be an exceptionally long video if I ain't careful. Uh, this is quite interesting, this was a charity compilation, which has three games on here, which has um, Mist, Road Rash, which is a game I used to play on the Mega Drive a heck of a lot, and Broken Sword which people often tell me is a game I should be playing, and that's Shadow of the Templars. All profits from the sale of help will be donated to children's charities. I can't remember, folks, where I got this from. My guessing is probably going to be uh, Car Boot. Uh, so there's Mist. There's the manual. And then on the other side, you can see Road Rash and Broken Sword. All nicely complete. And of course, for those of us who are really fascinated about this sort of thing, it's got the old double case on it as well. And it does say three discs down the side. There we go. Three games to the price of a car boot there. And I got this probably, I think, again from a cash converters for a pound. Uh, got a bit excited because I thought it was quite a rare game, but it's not. Uh, Hugo Frog Fighter. There are a couple of games in this series, and one, one of those is more rarer than the others. But I thought, well, as I always say in this situation, PlayStation games for a pound should not be left on the shelf no manual sadly and it's that really annoying character used to be on saturday morning television one of those stupid phoning um games i used to play you know you pick up left left right right it never used to work properly yeah um right we're still plenty more to come uh, but i'm gonna leave that as part one for the moment and part two will follow in due course i hope you enjoyed that if you've seen any games there at all 
that bring back memories for you, you played before, or you can recommend to me that I haven't played, you know I've played any of those, most of them, uh, do leave a comment below. Um, it would be great to hear from you. And I hope you've enjoyed that, but from the gaming country, uh, I need a drink, it's a very warm day. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, I do hope you take care, stay safe, and bye for now.